captions in English, please. So this is the second video on chapter 14, and this will focus on liquids properties that are due to intermolecular attractive forces. And uh, these would actually answer this question on how do Geiko defy gravity? Um, you can watch this uh, YouTube video um, on your own, but I will uh, give you a brief uh, summary here. Um, so geckos have um, on their feet, they have uh, an array of CT. So CT is like those long, um, long, very long features and they are ended by spatula and each spatula is able to um, interact with the substance they are uh, placed on and intermolecular attractive forces is uh, you know playing out and that allows the gecko to defy gravity so let's go over miscibility uh, the definition of miscibility is the uh, liquid's ability to mix with another liquid without separating into two phases. So uh, that means uh, liquids that are miscible uh, will form an homogeneous mixture, right? It, they will look like uh, one substance instead of uh, separate into two phases. And so in general, polar liquids are miscible with other polar liquids, but are not miscible with non-polar liquids. It follows the uh, rule that we call like dissolves like. So um, polarity is like properties. So polar liquids will dissolve in a polar uh, solvent and non-polar liquids will dissolve in a non-polar solvent. For example, water is a polar liquid and it's uh, not miscible, not soluble with pentane. Pentane, uh, pentane uh, C5H12 uh, is only made of carbon and hydrogen and there is no polar bonds in that molecule and so it's a non-polar liquid. And so water and pentane will not mix well, they will not be soluble, you will see two phases. Similarly, water and oil are not uh, miscible. We, there is the picture here on the right that shows you water and oil. Uh, the oil will always uh, move up because it's less dense than water and they will uh, not mix. Consequently, oil ends, oily ends and oily stains on clothes cannot be washed away with plain water. So, Let's look at intermolecular forces in action. Um, we uh, learned um, in the first video that uh, the most important manifestation of intermolecular forces is the very existence of liquids and solids. It's what uh, holds the molecules together or the formula units together uh, into the liquid phase or solid phase. So they are very important uh, forces to uh, uh, learn about. Without intermolecular forces, uh, solids and liquids would not exist and all matter would be gaseous. And uh, in liquids, we can observe several other manifestations of intermolecular forces, including the surface tension and viscosity. So we'll um, uh, see into more detail what are surface tension and viscosity. So let's start with surface tension. Surface tension is a property of the surface of a liquid that allows it to resist an external force. And maybe you've tried that, but uh, you can uh, make a paper clip float on water. You see the picture here showing many paper clips floating, even though they are, are more dense than water because there is a piece of uh, metal string in the plastic there. And so it is held up by the surface tension of water. The same, uh, it's the same principle that allows the, the water strider to walk on the surface of water without falling in because of surface tension. However, if you would try this experiment with uh, gasoline or, or um, any other non-polar liquid, uh, it would not be uh, able to float 
you could not uh, make a paper clip float on gasoline because the intermolecular forces among the molecules uh, composing gasoline are weaker than the intermolecular forces among water molecules. Water molecules is, uh, are, are polar and are um, very good at uh, behaving, uh, uh, are, are at showing surface tension. So why is it uh, doing that? Why there is surface tension, especially for water? So in a liquid, each molecule is pulled equally in every direction by neighboring liquid molecules through intermolecular attractive forces. And so uh, in the uh, schema, schematic here on the right, where you have the, the molecule inside the liquid, you can see that it's pulled by all other um, molecules, uh, it's attracted by all surrounding molecules. And because of that, because it's, you know, from all directions, then it results in a net force of zero. And so that molecule stays there. However, for the molecules at the surface, uh, they do not have other molecules on all sides of them. And therefore, they will be pulled inward because there is no uh, molecules above them to, uh, you know, pull them in the opposite direction. And so this creates uh, some internal pressure and forces the liquid surface to contract to the minimum, to the minimal area. So they will, the liquid will try to minimize the surface area uh, to minimize, uh, you know, the, the pressure exerted on the surface molecules. And so why are water drops spherical? And so surface tension explains that too. Water drops are spherical because of the surface tension caused by the attractive forces between water molecules. To minimize the surface area of a drop, uh, the water will um, take the shape in, of a sphere. And you see that very well on the space shutters. The complete absence of gravity results in floating spheres of water like you can see in that picture uh, below. And when you have um, um, clothes that have a Gore-Tex, for example, which is uh, very uh, uh, impermeable, uh, you will see water, you know, from very round droplets. So let's um, look at a video that will uh, show you an experiment that was made into a, inside a space shuttle. The question is, if you get a cloth dripping wet without gravity and you wring it out, what's going to happen? What will happen to a wrung out cloth? So, and I had to use equipment that was here on board the space station. We may have the coolest washcloths ever here on the space station. I'm going to show you. Here's one of our washcloths. And it's packed it. It's put down into this little tiny hockey puck so that uh, it saves space. But when you open up a hockey puck and you pull out your washcloth, this is the one I'm going to use for the experiment today. And so when you open up your hockey puck and turn it into a washcloth, it was compressed in a great big vise somewhere. Okay, so here's my washcloth, like a magic trick. And now I'm going to get this soaking wet, and then we're going to see what will happen when we wring it out. Meredith and Kendra suggested that I dip this in a bag, but bags don't hold water in space, so instead I filled a water bag. This has drinking water in it. And I'm going to uh, squirt a bunch of water into this washcloth. Okay, so here's a soaking wet washcloth. Get the microphone so you can hear me while I'm talking. And now let's, let's start wringing it out. It's really wet.
It's becoming a tube of water. The water is all over my hands, in fact. It rings out of the cloth into my hands. And if I let go of the cloth carefully, the water sort of has it stick to my hand. Okay, so the experiment worked beautifully. And the answer to the question is, the water squeezes out of the cloth, and then because of the surface tension of the water, it, um, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth and then up into my hand, almost like you had jello on your hands or gel on your hand, and it'll just stay there. Wonderful moisturizer on my hands. And the cloth doesn't really unravel itself. It just stays there floating like a, uh, like a dog's chew toy, soaking wet. Great experiment, worked perfectly. Meredith and Kendra, congratulations, great idea. So let's go through viscosity. Viscosity is the resistance of a liquid to flow. Liquids that are viscous uh, flow more slowly than liquids that are not viscous. For example, motor oil is more viscous than gasoline. Uh, maple syrup is more viscous than water. And so viscosity is greater in substances with stronger intermolecular forces because molecules cannot move around each other as freely uh, and so that hinders flow. So stronger intermolecular forces, higher viscosity for the same kind of uh, substance. And long molecules, um, you know, in chains, such as the idle carbons in motor oil, tend to form viscous liquids because of molecular entanglement. So because they are long, um, they, they get uh, intertwined and they hinder their movement, each other's movement. And so that makes uh, liquid flow less easily and that means it's more viscous. And so, um, um, people who are manufacturing uh, motor oil have to uh, find uh, a good compromise uh, for the viscosity of the motor oil. And so they are made to have a precise viscosity, the motor oil, to reduce engine friction but still move the parts. And we know that as temperature increases, viscosity decreases, right? Temperature makes it uh, easier to move. There is more uh, kinetic energy and molecules will move more easily. So the viscosity will decrease. And so um, when you are selecting a motor oil, there are two numbers. The first number uh, that is the viscosity when the temperature is cold and the W uh, symbolize winter. And it's also the value you would look for, uh, you know, when you start up your uh, engine. So you want a low viscosity because if temperature is uh, low, you want still to protect your engine and, and have uh, a low viscosity oil to, uh, you know, uh, protect your engine at the st uh, before it's warm or in cold weather. And then uh, the second number is the viscosity when uh, the motor is hot the engine has run for a while and now it's uh, warm or hot and uh, the number is higher because you want a higher viscosity uh, to protect still the parts because with temperature increasing you still need to protect the parts of the engine and so you don't want it to be so fluid that it would uh, not do the work of uh, reducing engine friction and so uh, you know, experiments they do to test the viscosity are uh, dropping uh, a steel ball into uh, test tubes that are filled with different uh, motor oils. And if you see that uh, the name here SAE20 up to SAE50, uh, the number 20s and 50s, uh, 30 and 40 are uh, viscosity values and the higher the number the higher the viscosity and so you understand why uh, the ball seems to uh, fall down less quickly in the SAE 50 than in the SAE 20. You know the slower the uh, ball is going down the more viscous is the oil and so that's how uh, motor oils are selected. <laughs> 